Ah, Yves Saint Laurent's Cuvus. The original and best, their number one bestseller, in fact it was so good it would go on to define the powerhouse genre. Just a few sprays of this beast like triggers a phenomenon in your brain that just makes you feel like you can take on fucking anything, all yourself up, find some pink spandex and like wrestle tigers and shit in Vegas for money or for free cause you fucking can. But it didn't just stop there. It didn't just end after that, people didn't just go, oh it was awesome, no, they kept cranking out more of them, there were so many flankers, flanker after flanker after flanker, it's like the people at YSL weren't even human, they were just machines cranking out cent after cent after cent, milking that fucking, uh, that fucking cow non-stop, milkity milkity milk, there's so many flankers, now when I first looked at the amount of flankers in Kuros, I thought my god that's insane, how can there be so fucking many, I mean Jesus, but I about show you some ridiculous fucking shit. You think Kuros? I thought Kuros was bad till I saw the rest. I mean, just look at some of this shit. So this is Yves Saint Laurent's Fragrantica page. They have a shit ton of scents. So many scents, some awesome ones. Look at all those fucking scents. There are so many scents, it's like a gold mine. Anyone who likes fragrances, even the tiniest bit, will be jerking off right now at this segment. In fact, they probably set it to AB repeat. So, I mean look, look at Black Opium, look how many fucking flankers there are, and look at the dates! Look at Black Opium came out in 2014, like they released more fr flankers for that in like 4 years than they did for the whole fucking line, that's insane, look how many people love this so much, there's only like, look at the men's one, even the men's one, which only has like the Eau de Toilette and Parfum now, even has like 3 additional unnecessary flankers, how much did people love that shit? Look at Jazz. Jazz has only three, it doesn't need any. And then there's Kuros, Body Kuros, Kuros this, Kuros that, Kuros the next thing. Oh, and don't get me started on the fucking tonics. The Kuros tonics, there's just so many of them. People were obsessed with this scent. It just wasn't going anywhere. It was fucking crazy. Compared to the opium flankers, the Kuros ones really don't seem that bad. You always hear if you watch like MacGyver or Miami Vice or any 80s fucking TV show or movie, there's always about opium, there's always opium dens they're taking down. Well it turns out we are completely wrong this whole time. They're talking about opium, we sitting there thinking, oh they also mean the drug, oh yeah neat crack down that, but we were completely wrong. They were trying to stop this from happening. They saw into the future and were like, yeah guys, we're going to have so much opium, it's going to get crazy. People get confused and the consumer will not know what to do. People be having heart attacks and shit, jumping up and down, doing backflips, like, oh, what can I buy? They'll walk into stores. They'll be fucking overdosing on cocaine in the toilets because they don't know how else to react. There's just so much fucking opium everywhere. People just couldn't get enough. Just look at the loam range. The first loam came out like 30 years after Kuros did. But somehow, it has even more fucking flankers! How can it have so many flankers? It's not like the, the original was good, but it wasn't amazing. I mean, come on! Are you kidding me? Not to mention Dior. Dior really got fucking carried away with this. You know how people say, oh, you can't have too much of a good thing? Well, let me tell you, the people at Dior's marketing team took that real fucking literally. Look at how many flankers. They were less Fahrenheit flankers. I mean, look at it. People also seem to really love Dior Poison. It's like, I understand that a lot of women's scents have more flankers than men's, but look at Dior Poison. They were so fucking many. I mean, yeah, it was a good scent, but I mean, really? Did people love it that fucking much? And look at the dates. Half of these flankers came out in like, what, 2010 upwards? Or at the very least, you know, earliest 2005 upwards. Honest to God. Now, I know I've said some bad things about Chanel, but really, when it comes to the whole flanker game, they really aren't that bad. Seriously, look at the range. I mean, yeah, there's flankers with the popular scents, but it really doesn't go excessive. It's not as if you know there's like 15 for each fucking scent. Even Blue de Chanel only has two flankers, and that's super popular. No one shuts the fuck up about that. If they were going to milk any scent in their range, it'd be Blue de Chanel, and there's only two of them. Plant Amigo East, etc. Allure is the most flanked, obviously, but for the most part, it's really not that bad. But to be fair, they obviously just change them and don't change the names, but I mean, Ego East only has 3 cents. Platinum Ego East people never shut the fuck up about. If you're going to release about 20 flankers, why not that? People are always like, Platinum Ego East is my number one compliment getter. How? How? This is another annoying motherfucker. See these? These are the Kuros Tonics. I also think there's another one that's got a sort of blue bottle. I think that's 2008. But 
from what I believe, the one that left, I believe, is 2014, and fuck knows when the run the right came through, because, you know, I can't bother looking at that shit, and I shouldn't have to. Why isn't it marked on the bottle? They look the exact same. Now, yeah, the one on the left has those little checkered bits, but let's say you walked into a store, bought the tonic, then two years later, saw the other one, you wouldn't buy it, you'd think, oh, well, that's just the same damn thing, because it just says Kuros and looks the exact same. Is it so hard that they could just put... 2014, 2008, is it that hard to just put the release date? Look at the design. At the top there, there's this nice square little box. They could easily just put 2014, 2008, or whatever fucking year it was. I don't know, 1969 or some shit. I don't fucking know, but there's no excuse not to do that. Oh, and they are not the only one. Pineapple Vintage were also guilty of this bullshit. When they released Noir, alongside the original, both the bottles look the same, except they didn't have end labels on them. Now, yeah, now they do it, but they should have fucking thought about that the first time. I even messaged them and they were like, yeah, we'll put labels on them. Why make the bottle the same and then later decide, hey, maybe we should put labels on them? The boxes don't look the same, the boxes look completely different, so why is it so fucking hard to originally put a label on the thing? Now, I like it's good that they're doing it and they're doing it now, but I mean, come on, having a label on the bottom of the bottle which looks identical to the fucking original that it's copying is common goddamn sense. You shouldn't need to, that shouldn't even be a revision. Like, if the sprayer was defective or the label was really shit and constantly fell off or something, then yeah, I can understand. But we're talking about a piece of fucking plastic that's got glue on the end of it. Jesus. Now, I'm going to come to the end here. If I were on, I know fine well a lot of you are screaming about a lot of bullshit and there is a lot more stuff I could show, but if I'd done that, we'd be doing this video for the next two hours. Hell, I might as well have done a live stream. And that'd be a pain in the ass because I can't edit it as fast as I can here, you know? My head's of a fucking carpal tunnel or some shit, you know? Which would be a lot better than sifting through this, but that's beside the point. So yeah, we always go about flying kills and how they're shit and how they're bad and how reformulations are sometimes good and sometimes not, blah blah blah. But it's only when you sit down and actually look at this stuff, it boggles the fucking mind. Especially that thing about Kuro's tonic and not having labels in the bottle. Don't be so fuck. But yeah, honestly. I don't understand how, this just, I mean I've got no words to describe it, it just boggles the mind. But yeah guys, thank you for watching, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and as always leave your feedback in the comments, I'd love to hear some of the bullshit you guys cannot stand. Tell me if you know like what I mentioned, you don't like labels or a spray that's a piece of shit or you know, not mentioning which edition the bottle is, you know, common sense fuck ups like that, you know, charging 49.99 for something that is fucking flawed. Bullshit like that. Leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear. Maybe I'll do a revision, a version 2 of this video. You know, you never know. Flankers continued or some shit. We don't know. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching and keep on smelling fly. But make sure that it's got a goddamn label on it so you know what you're fucking buying.